Gold and silver prices continue their decline, why Bernie Sanders may be the next Obama, Greece flip-flops with its bailout deal with the European Union, Iran nuke deal that may allow them to get nuclear weapons in as little as a year, and do we only have seven months left in the United States before a collapse? So gold and silver continue their decline in their paper prices at least, whereas most of us know that there is a huge demand for the physical metals. The US Mint actually sold out of the Silver Eagle. Actually, I believe it's just silver entirely that they've run out of, but certainly the Silver Eagles after a record demand. Millions of Silver Eagles are being sold. Demand is an all-time high for, from the US Mint, but we're still seeing paper prices continue to decline with, as of the time of this video recording. Silver's just above $15, about $15 and 18 cents with um, gold being below 1150. So a lot of people are wondering, is this a good time to buy gold? I've commented in the past about how I don't buy gold, I sell dollars. So to me, the paper price is mostly irrelevant. Obviously, you can get more of it right now for your dollars, but keep in mind that because the price of what you're paying for physical is still tracking the paper price, if we see a, a stark decline in the stock market to do some, due to any kind of collapse, in the very short term, you're gonna see the price of physical drop as well, at least in certain major dealers, like online dealers and stuff like that. So you may see other people become more wise to that fact and not sell for the paper price, but I believe a lot of the websites probably have controls that are set within limits to base their prices off of the spot price. So if you were to see a huge stock market crash and you know paper silver, paper um, gold were to drop as well, you would probably see at least in the short term, the prices of physical track that on websites like Atmex and stuff like that, so it may be a good time to uh, buy more physical then. As always, it's a good time to trade your uh, paper assets for physical assets, but I absolutely would not be surprised to see the prices go down a little further from here before the eventual um, increase once the paper prices and the desire demand for physical eventually separates. How long that will be, I really couldn't say. There's been a lot of hoopla on the Iran deal that was reached, and the deal entails limiting the number of the uh, centrifuges that they have for uranium enrichment down to one facility. It reduces the total number by two thirds and only allows them to do it at one facility, and it allows for inspections up to a 15 and 20 year time frames and all these other little things. And the hilarious part is that and as you'll see in the CNN article that is posted at rulethewasteland.com, that this all these uh, sanctions only change their timetable from being able to produce their first nuclear weapon within the next two to three months to within the next year. So obviously that doesn't really change a whole lot if you're w one of the people who is worried about Iran and ha them having nuclear weapons. For me, I have a hard time really getting worked up about it, seeing as how even countries like North Korea have nuclear weapons and it hasn't turned out to be the insane uh, boondoggle that everyone thought it would be and uh, hasn't had any disastrous effects. Obviously North Korea doesn't have their shit together quite as well as Iran, but the bottom line here is not that other countries have nuclear weapons, is it why are they wanting to use it against us? You don't see Switzerland and other countries like that being worried about Iran having nuclear weapons, and there's a certain sort of uh, irony and hypocrisy when the only country in the world to ever use a nuclear weapon against anyone is uh, acting like it's going to be a big problematic issue for another country to have them. Now it's true that Iran does hate the US and it's very likely that they would be possibly involved in a trying to attack us even maybe with nuclear weapons but the issue here is not nuclear weapons because they ha still have these interests without nukes with or without nukes so that doesn't really change much. So as you may or may not know, there is a large amount of presidential candidates in the running on both sides. And uh, one of the candidates on the Democratic side right now is Bernie Sanders. And uh, Captain Capitalism had an interesting article, and I'll put the link in uh, rulethewasteland.com, about how he thinks that Bernie Sanders is going to be our next president. And he's not happy about this, but he's just stating that's what he thinks is gonna happen. And he's an interesting explanation as to why. And it parallels the reasons that why Obama became elected in, uh, for the last two elections, and that is because he has certain qualities that, that uh, are desirable, I guess, to large portions of the population. One of those is that even though he is obviously an establishment leftist, his uh, honesty about being you know, socialist in his policies, he's upfront about how he thinks about that, is appealing to certain um, millennials, present company excluded, of course, and uh, 
Also, obviously, he's going to be getting the large amount of the uh, minority vote, which all the Democratic candidates get. It's basically a guaranteed that the Democratic candidate is going to get 90 plus percent of the black vote and things like that. So. Obviously, that's a shoe in They have a huge number of immigrant populations that are obviously going to be voting for the parties that promise them easier times there. And so when you have these uh, characteristics that he is a party guy who comes across as being outside the party, and he also appeals to the um, minorities and everything like that, that we could just very well see Bernie Sanders being our next president. Check out Captain Capitalism if you want to review that article. A lot of people are saying that the Republicans need to totally divest themselves from uh, any association with Donald Trump. But it's hilarious because, as someone once told me, the, the Republicans' problem for years has been that when the Democrats offer everybody a free lunch, they think they're going to get some of the vote by offering everybody half a free lunch. Instead of saying, hey, we really want to appeal to the people who actually believe different things, they try to make friends with everybody and just offer a watered-down version of the same bullshit, which is not even going to get the, the uh, liberals on your side. It's certainly not going to get the uh, conservatives on your side as well. So they've been alienating the actual conservatives for decades in an attempt to win over on a certain amount of moderates or even liberals, which is a totally failed policy and what people don't understand when they see someone like Donald Trump because whether you love him or hate him you have to realize that his stance on immigration is what mirrors about 70 percent of the country at least certainly 70 percent of the non-illegal immigrant population agrees that immigration is a problem and if he runs on that issue almost exclusively then he would stand a good chance of being elected and probably the last chance that anyone not in a uh, democratic or you know pro illegal immigration stance could ever hope to win because demographics alone for the next 10 15 years are going to make it almost impossible for a actually conservative candidate to win we have increasing numbers of um, social programs and entitlement programs and illegal immigrants flooding into the country will make it so that everyone in the country practically, maybe 70% of the people in the country will either be on some sort of a welfare program, or it's probably closer to 90% if you include all the government uh, entitlements, will be on some sort of government entitlement program or will be an illegal immigrant or have a family member who was an illegal immigrant. So anyone who runs against either illegal immigration or entitlement programs is just going to have an extreme uphill battle and have absolutely no chance of winning. So we saw the Greece referendum not too long ago where the population voted to no austerity. They did not want austerity and so it was basically a de facto vote to exit the European Union because there was no way presumably that they could continue to stay in the European Union without having to accept austerity measures and deal with the huge debt burden that they have. So now we see the uh, Greek Prime Minister Cipr Alex Alexis Tsipras basically defy the will of the people, which has been an ongoing trend in all of these European Union debacles, and say that he's going to accept a deal from the European Union, the IMF, and all that stuff. Then, within just as many days, we see that deal basically falling apart now, because a lot of the interests in the European Union are not happy with what is gonna have to be done, and they want more concessions from Greece and things like that. So it's definitely a very, very strange roller coaster type situation where we see that banks and IMFs are, really don't want the Greeks to default for a host of reasons, but one of the main ones probably is that the uh, they like the control. It's a control issue, and there's also a lot of you know minutia involved with the derivatives trades because just like with the banks in the United States that are unwilling to sell their uh, distressed properties because that requires them to actually list on their balance sheets what this thing is really worth so they just hold on to it. The Greek default could actually trigger a lot of uh, credit default swaps and derivatives nightmares and things like that. So there is interest on that end to keep these things from happening, at least officially happening. For the Greek people, the bottom line is there's going to be austerity. It may not be a government issued austerity, but when you talk about a decrease in the standard of living, that is going to happen. It can happen under the boot heels of the IMF and the European Union, or it can happen in the Icelandic way, where you get out from under it, you suffer the consequences of the decisions that you've been making for the past few decades, and then you fix the problems, and you come out on the other side, 
better than you were before. And that's their only two options. But to think that they're gonna be able to avoid extreme hardships in the short to medium term is just, it's just not true. This is not gonna happen. So hopefully they understand this, but as a country, they're much more uh, used to having government support in their everyday lives and a lot of other, especially in America, at least America as it has been. So they may not be willing to truly give up that even if it, if it means that they'll come out ahead in the long term. So we'll see what happens. There's definitely some interesting things going on there. So many of you who watch this channel and who read rulethewasteland.com will probably be familiar with the Economic Collapse blog. And it's a website that has gained a lot of popularity the past five or six years. And the author, Michael Snyder, does a lot, almost daily articles on economic news and around the world, anything related to economic collapse, has a lot of great commentary and news information on that website. He just did a very interesting interview with Daniel from um, the Vision Victory channel on YouTube, where he talks about how based on everything that he's read and all the information that he's absorbed over the past five plus years that he thinks that we're going to have basically a major economic collapse type event within the next six to seven months in the US. He didn't say specifically what he thinks will uh, cause this or lead this off. Obviously there's a large number of things that could happen but uh, and he did say that he thinks that this is gonna happen within the next six or seven months. So we'll see, obviously we are at a state in the global economy and global financial systems that there are just hair triggers on every possible source of problems for the global economy. And any one of them could go off at any moment and cause a insane domino effect. It's actually very surprising that the events that have happened already have not caused such an event. And it just goes to show you how much interest there is in holding together the status quo at pretty much all levels of society. But the status quo as it stands right now is mathematically and just logistically doomed to fail. Even if it does not happen right away, there's absolutely no way that it can go on forever or even for the next 20 years. So if something is going to happen, Michael Snyder seems to think it's gonna happen within the, next six, within the next six or seven months. It also tends to echo some things that we've heard from other people, like um, John Williams of Shadow Stats, who has revised his 2015 hyperinflation, I believe, to be within 2016. So it certainly could line up with that. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned, guys, and check out rulethewasteland.com for links.